This manual espresso machine, the Flare Pro 2, is wildly popular. And despite that, it never really grabbed me. Over the years, as it became more and more popular, I began to wonder, is there something I'm missing here? What was I getting wrong about the Flare Pro 2? The very original Flare was released in 2016 in a Kickstarter campaign. After the Flare original, they added several other models, including the Neo, which I've already reviewed. You can catch that video right here. They rebranded the original as the classic Flare. They added this one, the Flare Pro 2, which is now considered the flagship, and the 58, which is a 58 millimeter portafilter version of the Flare. The company has just boomed. So, when you open the Flare Pro 2, what is inside? Let's take a look. The first thing is that it comes in this case, which is clearly designed to travel. Flare is right out of the gate telling you that this is a portable espresso maker. You can take it to work, you can take it on vacation with you. It's not designed to sit on the counter for forever, and they are hoping that at least in some way, you will consider this a portable machine. When you open the case, all the components are inside. You have the main arm right here, the group head where the espresso is pressed, a little uh, silicone cap, the tamp, the pressure gauge, one of the reasons why people love the flares so much, a little plunger, dosing funnel, shower screen, a funnel to help clean up your espresso shots if you don't wanna run them bottomless, the base, and a drip tray in this little baggie right here. The way the flare operates is pretty simple. You put your espresso in the group head with your hot water. You pull the arm up, you put your cup under here, and you push the arm down and out comes your espresso. So what did I get wrong about the Flare Pro 2? What really set it apart from a lot of its peers? Where was I missing the boat in terms of what made this a much better machine than a lot of the others. The main thing was this right here. The pressure gauge on the flare allows you to know exactly how much pressure you're putting on your shot. And they were one of the very first manual espresso manufacturers to do this. And this really changed the game for a lot of people. It opened the door to something called espresso pressure profiling. And what this is, is it's modifying the pressure in specific ways to allow you to pull your shot in different ways. And this was something that was new to the world of manual espresso. Not a lot of people were doing it. And once people had it, they loved it. They knew exactly when they were putting nine bars of pressure on. They could do low pressure pre-infusions. They could do low pressure shots. They could do pressure ramping. All of these things they could do with a high degree of precision, not previously possible on other manual espresso machines. And even when it came to electric espresso machines, the number of machines that can do true pressure profiling is very small. And these machines are insanely expensive, running into the thousands of dollars to be able to control the pressure of the espresso with the same precision as you can with the Flare Pro 2. This was really a game changer when it came to the world of manual espresso. And I wanna say, even though I can pressure profile on other manual espresso makers, you're never gonna know exactly how much pressure you're putting on unless you have a gauge to tell you. And that is something that will help you learn the feel more quickly and allow you to press shots more repeatably than without a gauge. Now, since the Flare, other machines like the Cafe Lot Robot have added gauges. However, that one comes in at a lot higher price point than this one. So pressure profiling is fantastic. Obviously a game changer for people making espresso at home if you didn't want to spend thousands of dollars. But what else was I missing about this? One of the things that Flare has done that is really unique is they have not just created a single manual espresso maker. They have created a modular line of products that can grow and stretch with you as you are growing in your ability of making espresso at home. You can start with something like the Neo, you can upgrade the brew basket, you can add the pressure gauge. When you're ready for something a little bit more, you can move into the Flare Pro 2. And then when you're ready to try a true 58 millimeter portafilter experience, you can even move up to the Flare 58. And this is an ecosystem that just doesn't exist in any other manual espresso maker line. It is very unique in the industry and they have done it very well. 
Another thing that I think I didn't pay enough attention to with Flare and their model is the community that they have built around their machine. They are passionate about resourcing people to make great espresso at home. They produce videos, they have a thriving YouTube channel, they're engaged on social media, and they have built a great community. And really that culture of helping each other, helping the people using their machines has permeated out. I always see Flare users helping other people on the internet making better espresso at home. The Flare community is very unique, very positive, very progress focused and very helpful. And that is something that is hard to find online and is incredibly valuable. When you are just somebody at home who has gotten a machine, no idea how to use it, and you're trying to figure it out, to be able to go online and find other people using the same thing as you and have a conversation with them about your machine is really something that sets Flare apart. There are a couple things though that I do not love about the Flare. Number one is all of these parts. And even though the flare is very easy to use, very modular, the downside of that is you have a ton of parts that you need to keep track of and get into a bit of a workflow with. And like anything, once you're used to it, it just kind of happens and you don't tend to think about it too much, but it is a lot of little parts and pieces that you need to work with. If you forget to put one piece in, it can have a really negative effect on your shot. One other thing that people do not tend to like about the flare is having to preheat the group head. That's something you'll have to do with all manual espresso machines. And if you want to do manual espresso at home without using an electric machine, preheating is likely something that you are just going to have to get comfortable with in some way. When it comes to the look and feel of the flare, the design, it's not my favorite but a lot of people like it. I would love to know what you think in the comments, if this is a very handsome looking machine or if you don't really care for the looks. I find that people are a little bit mixed on that one. The portafilter of the design is 46 millimeters, so it's maybe a little bit more narrow than I would like. However, the last thing about the flare that I think is really remarkable is how cheap they do all of this for. You can get all of this for $325 US, which is an incredibly, low price when you consider that to get any other flow profiling machine you are going to be spending thousands and thousands of dollars even to get another manual espresso maker like the flare 58 or the cafe lot robot that is 58 millimeter and has a gauge you are going to spend hundreds of dollars more than this machine so that I think is maybe the most important thing that the flare has got going for it it offers an incredible amount of value in an a comparably low price package. Now, $325 is still a lot of money, so I'm not saying it's cheap. However, in the scope of the capability that it gives you for an espresso maker at home, it does offer you a lot of value. But I think the most important thing is, does it actually make good espresso? So why don't I make you one and we'll see how it does. Now with any manual espresso maker, you are going to need to preheat the group head if you want to have really great espresso. So I'm going to do that here. I'll separate the portafilter from the group head, put the group head in the cap and fill it up with hot water. I've got 15 grounds of coffee ground here. I'm just going to slip the dosing funnel onto the portafilter and dump in my grounds. Do a little bit of WDT here. And then I'm going to give a little tamp, not a ton of pressure. Then I can put the shower screen on top of the puck. All right, I'm gonna dump out my preheat water, connect the group to the portafilter and put the whole arrangement in here. Put my cup underneath. And I'm going to fill the group head, put in the gauge and press. I'm gonna do a slow pre-infusion. Then I'm gonna take the pressure up to nine bars. and then we're done. Get some really good crema on that. We're gonna swirl it. Oh, that's really good. Mm.
Well, that definitely stacks up in terms of espresso quality, for sure. Mm. So now you gotta ask yourself, is this the right machine for you? And I think there's only one person that can answer that, and that is you. I got a lot of things wrong with this machine, so I would encourage you to not discount it as one of your options. However, I always tell people that the best machine for them is the one that they are going to get the most excited about using. So if you wanna get into Espresso, you don't have a huge budget for a machine, you're looking at manual, and you get excited about having the flare, then I think that there's a lot of merit to considering it for that reason. If you have seen another manual espresso maker out there on the market and you feel like, man, you hear everything I'm saying about the flare, but this other thing is really calling your name, maybe go for that. And if you want a second opinion, don't hesitate to reach out and I will let you know as well. I will say that the flare offers incredible bang for buck at $325 and the espresso is absolutely delicious. It's also got a high ceiling. So as you grow in your espresso making at home, it is gonna be a machine that will grow with you. And even after you get an electric machine, you will probably find yourself still using this, taking it with you on vacation or whatever. If you like the looks of the Flare, but you're not looking to spend 325 bucks, you definitely want to check out the Flare Neo, and I've got a video on that right here. But I would love to hear from you in the comments. Do you like the Flare Pro 2? Do you not like it? And especially for Flare owners, I would love to hear from you how your experience has been and if I missed anything. Happy espresso making, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.